to Spear Tailwind. I'm Erica Mason from the University of Missouri. Today's video is the fourth part of a four-part series about how to multiply linear expressions. This last video explains how to use graphic organizers and then how to transition students into being able to solve these linear equations in contextualized word problems. Before we show you this graphic organizer, we first want to draw your attention to the importance of using multiple representations. So if you've watched the other three parts of this series, you remember that there are three primary ways that we encourage students to represent mathematics, using either concrete representations, pictorial ones, or abstract ones. In her article, Dr. Tricia Strickland calls them concrete, representational, abstract, integrated. And that integrated idea really means that of the three representational types, there's no hierarchy. That is, concrete representations aren't necessarily lower level, and abstract representations aren't necessarily higher level. But that really, the three types can be integrated so that students can use whichever one makes the most sense to them. This is especially important for students with mathematics difficulty or disabilities so that they have additional tools that they can use to make sense of mathematical problems. Even though there's no hierarchy of representational types, it's really common for students to first start with concrete representations and then engage with pictorial representations and then finally feel more comfortable and confident using abstract representations. On the way from pictorial representations to abstract representations, it's to be helpful to introduce students to a graphic organizer. And this is where the box method comes in. So first, you're going to look at each factor in your problem, and you're going to put one term in each cell. So first, we have x. And here, we're going to write plus 5. And it's important to keep track of that sign. Up here, we're going to write 3x and then minus 4. Now, we're going to go ahead and use this method to multiply all of the factors by each other. So first, we're going to start with 3x times x, which is 3x squared. Next, we're going to do 3x times 5, which is 15x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Let's look for a minute about how this box method really represents the mathematics in this problem. If your students have any experience using algebra blocks or algebra tiles, they might notice that this part here really represents that corner piece. And so in their mind, as they're filling out this box method, they might be actually visualizing those concrete manipulatives. This really represents the distributive method or the distributive property because you can see how every term is accounted for in a multiplicative way with other terms in the problem. So now we're ready to take this product here and translate it into our answer. So we're going to record here 3x squared. And then we're going to look at our x terms, which we have 15x and a negative 4x, which is uh, 11x. And then lastly, we have our integer constant, which is negative 20. Now that students are comfortable using a graphic organizer, you might find it's time for them to move on to solving problems where they multiply linear expressions that come from contextualized problems. Before we take a look at this problem, it's important to think of an attack strategy. And the one we're going to use today is called UPS Check. And this stands for understand the problem, make a plan, solve the problem, and then check to see if your answer is reasonable. So first, to understand the problem, we're just simply going to read it. Liz, Joe, and John want to expand their garden. The length can be increased by three feet, and the width can be increased by two feet. I'm going to underline just a few words that are really important to understanding this problem. So I'm going to underline the word increase, and then the quantity three feet, and include those units so that they help us check whether or not our answer is reasonable later. And then I'm also going to come over here and underline this idea of increase by two feet. And I'll have to remember that those increases are specific to both the length and the width. Next, I'm going to make a plan. And my plan in this problem is actually two parts. So the first part is I'm going to fill out this table. And so I'm going to look at this information here. So I see that Liz has a garden, and the original side in feet is 4 feet. I know that the length is increased by 3 feet. So that means 4 plus 3, which is now 7 feet. The width is increased by 2 feet, so her new width is 6 feet. And the new area is just the length times the width, 
which is now 42 feet. For Joe, his original side and feet is five feet. Um, the side, or the width, I'm sorry, or the length can be increased by three feet, which is eight feet. The width can be increased by two feet, which is seven feet. And the new area of his garden is 56 feet. And now let's look at John's garden. The original length of the side of his garden was seven feet. And if I increase that by three feet, I'm going to get 10 feet. And then if I increase the width by two feet, it's going to be nine feet. The new area of his garden is 90 feet. Now we look down here at this bottom row and it says any garden whose original side length is X. Okay, so if I know that the length can be increased by three feet, I know that some side length X is going to be plus three feet. And then I know the width is increased by two feet. And so again, I know that some side length X plus two feet is going to be the new width. Now I'm ready to actually use my second part of my plan to figure out what the new area and square feet is going to be. Here now, students are going to draw their own graphic organizer. So you're going to encourage them to recreate the graphic organizer by making sure that they account for both terms and that all the cells can be filled. Okay, so we're going to look at our two terms in our problem down here, which is x here plus 3, and then our other term, which is x plus 2. And again, we're going to then distribute um, each factor or each term across the other terms. So we have x times x, which is x squared, x times 3, which is 3x, 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 3, which is 6. Now we're ready to translate our answer from here back over to our table. So if I look at the product that we represented here, the new area in square feet is represented by the expression x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now the last step in our strategy is to check to see if our answer is reasonable. And we can do this in a couple ways. First, you might go back to some of these original side lengths and plug them in. So what would happen if you plug in 4 to this new equation, or expression, excuse me? What happens? Do we end up getting the answer 42? Another strategy to check your answer would be to actually pull out some manipulatives, some concrete algebra blocks, and try to represent these uh, multiplicative relationships in that way. Or a student could always just sketch the manipulatives without actually pulling out the physical manipulatives. Again, to recreate that uh, corner piece and those concrete manipulatives and to see whether or not they come up with a representation that models x squared plus 5x plus 6. Thanks for watching this stair tailored video and this four part series in which we talked about multiplying linear expressions. Make sure to check out another video series in which we talk about factoring linear expressions.